Welcome to our studies in the books of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Our theme verse comes from John 14, verse 6, which John wrote, but Jesus said these words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And so in this journey, we find that the way matches up very well with 1st John, as does the truth with 2nd and the life with 3rd. But also understand that all three of these words will crop up and appear throughout all three of the epistles. In the sense of the way, what the Lord is talking about, he's, he says, I, I am life's purpose and life's direction. I'm the way to walk. And he mentioned that, that wide is the way to destruction, that the lost are walking on that. But very few find the path. And when we're on the path, we need not stray. And he gives us the tools and the pattern in chapter 2 and 3 on how to walk and conduct our life and some of the things we're going to find along our way. So if you've not listened to the first 14 verses of uh, 1 John 2, they are up on my YouTube channel. You can find them there as you can also chapter 1 and the introduction and some other things that we add as we go along. So let's follow the eye pattern. Here's where we've been already. If, look at all the eyes of how this starts off. Uh, if any man sin, then it tells us, uh, if we sin, what do we do? What do we got? If we keep, okay, if we are keeping his commandments, if we are keeping his word, what he has written and spoken, if we say something that we are children of God, then our behavior needs to match this. If we say we are this, then we need to be that. And then he writes, just to close off the first half, he says, I write unto you, and he's just sharing sort of a recap with us and some knowledge that we need to have. So today uh, we come across, if any man in the first in verses 15 through 17. These are very famous verses. Uh, and here's some clarification, and once again, just a renewal of challenge. Uh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And so, love not the world, that quote is what he's, it's, a, it's an exclamation. Stop loving the world system. Don't become part of that. Here it is loving the world. The world is worldly mindedness. That's what we just, our mind is given to over to things of the world or certain things of the world or a hobby, um, a, a habit, a vocabulary, just a, a, a world thinking. We need to have a God vision and see the world as God sees the world. And so it says, if that's our, if that's our narrative, then, then the love of God is not in us. And that's, that's pretty harsh. So here's uh, something I picked up about what it perhaps is talking about of loving the world, the wealth of the world, the old nature. We have uh, raiment, the clothing, how we appear, our appearance. Lust, that's our desires. We'll see more of that in a minute. Dominion, that's our self That's our self will. I want to do what I want to do. And so the Lord takes a back seat or he lives in the trunk. Worldliness is rampant in the church. The devil is not fighting churches. He's joining them. He isn't persecuting Christianity. He's professing it. Vance Havner said that many years ago, and how true it is. And I'm just saying this a blanket statement of a church that said, that calls themselves Christian and have, has Christian doctrine, um, that they have a Bible and that they preach, speak from it, and how worldly many, many denominations and churches themselves are falling. Verse 16 says, For all that is in the world... And the word all, what it's saying is, for all without exception that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, 
It's not of the Father, but is of the world. And so let's look at the next phrase of that. You've sort of picked up on the color coding now and how things go. I, I put lust in green, but it belongs also with the blue. And lust defined in scripture as having one's heart set upon or just plain passion. So we, we can lust after what someone else is wearing or we can lust after somebody sexually. We can lust over a house that we wish we had. And that just becomes our passion. And so the Lord goes on and then what is he saying? That the lust of the flesh is a desire for fleshly gratification. Drugs, drink, feeding our flesh, watching what we want to watch, uh, reading what we want to read, and things that are not uh, of, of the Lord whatsoever. They are of the world. If we go a little bit further, he talks about the lust of the eyes, and it's in a gray color. And, and the lust of the eyes, should, he talks about the lust of the flesh and the cravings and lusts stimulated by what is seen, our eyes. So what we are, what we are looking at really matters. We need to guard our eyes. And then he comes to the matter of pride of life. Actually, in the Greek, it should read the boastful pride of life. That gets reflected in whatever status symbol is important to me or seems to define my identity. Who am I? And what's important that I dress, uh, I dress to, when people see, they see the dress, they don't see me. And so I have a pride of life. I would have a pride of life. I, what's important is status. What is important is, is position, a power of some kind. And that gets, that is reflected on how I am portrayed and how I am seen. And the world passes away. The world is passing away, Scripture says, and the lust thereof, and having one's passion towards that, that world that we crave, desire, that we lust after, the things of the culture, is passing away. And including with it are the lusts, the things that we like. But is a contrast word. But there's a flip side. He that does the will of God. He, it's in present tense, and he that pursues the will of God. Who seeks the way of the Lord. Abides forever. Lives forever is what he's talking about. So very important. We, truthfully, we are all tempted every day. We are, we are trying to be Satan and ourselves sometimes let ourselves be dragged into one of those three arenas, or maybe all three, but they're all part of the world. The world's dying. We should not die with it, but seek and do God's will. Wise are those who gear their goals to heavenly gains. It is the last. All right, now we're talking about the last times. Little children, and really it would read, Dear Little Children, it is the last time, or the last times, uh, as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So he's dealing with last time issues. Let me go ahead and go a little further and finish off this verse, and then I'm going to give you some other scriptures. In the blue, as we continue the scripture, it is the last time, and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Uh, just simply a phrasing is this, Antichrist is coming. We don't put him way out there and say shall come. That's true, he will come, but he is on, he is Preparation is underway of his coming. This is a real bad guy, and we read about him all throughout the book of Revelation. However, John continues to say, even now are there many antichrists, and this is not a title now, this is what they are doing. It's not a proper name, but there are a lot of antichrists, people that work against the Lord and God's people. 
And uh, actually, John is saying, we, we know many have appeared. And guess what? We know many are with us right now, and many more will appear if the Lord tarries, whereby we know that it is the last time. So that last phrasing right there is actually speaking, John is speaking, we have experienced these antichrists. We know. We know. And we've, we've seen them. All right, here's other scriptures that have uh, the, in where it talks about uh, the last days. And these last days has spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. James 5, 3, your gold, your silver have rusted, and their rust will be a witness against you and will consume your flesh like fire. It's the world, the things of the world. It is in the last days that you have stored up your treasure. So it's in the last days is where to store our treasure. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you. Know this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts. 2 Peter 3.3. 3. Let's go to verse 19. They went, and he's still talking about the Antichrist. They as Antichrists. They went out from us. Now get this. They're part of the church. They're part of the early churches. And the Antichrists are in our, our fundamental Bible-believing churches. They're there. And they were part of us, but they were members, but they went out from us. They were caught and they left. But they weren't of us. For if they'd been of us, they'd no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest or open that they were not of us at all. They get unmasked. The phrase that says they were not of us means they weren't genuine believers. It had nothing to do with the Lord's people. And I just mentioned to you that they might be made manifest, that they might be brought to light, or literally that they might be unmasked, that they were not of us. And you know what? In the world, if we watch these people that claim Christ once or that they're a member of a church in good standing or they go somewhat, and some of them are Christian denominational type churches. Many of the denominational ones no longer preach the gospel, though. But when you really, when the, the, you get them away from God's people and out of, out of the way and lay the Bible down next to them, they are on masks. We see them for what they are. All right, we go into a section of apostates now, and we can see them featured and what is said about them. Uh, they were part of us, but not of Christ. They have no Holy Spirit. They deny our Lord. They're not saved in 23, and they're seducers in 26. So they're not just covert to start with. In the end, they become very public and, and are out to seduce other Christians to pull them into their doctrines. But it, now, but is a qualifier again. Now here's something we flip side now. We've just talked about Antichrist and really sad, not good, not good issues that the church was facing. But you have an unction, you have an anointing from the Holy Christ. The Holy One is not the Spirit of God, but is of Christ. Christ has anointed us. Christ has called us and set us aside for a service and a walk in righteousness. Wow. It's almost like we've been crowned early to go and to be like Christ and to serve him. And our walk needs to be in righteousness. And, and from the Holy One, that's Christ. And you know all things. And what are the all things that we know? He's, God has equipped us with the truth. His word. We have God's word. We have the equipment that we need to carry on and to keep going. All right, I've not written is uh, all about in verses 21 to 25. So we're getting close to wrapping things up by then. 
uh, I have not written unto you because you know the truth, and truth is 100% true, it's no lie. So he says, I did not write these things to you because you don't know the truth, but because you do know it, and that no lie is of the truth. And so a lie is always something that is untrue and it's told to deceive. Even little white lies are told to deceive, to misdirect. And so it goes on, and John says this, Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? So the li a, a liar here, an apostate, someone who is an anti-Christ, is a liar, and he denies Jesus as being the Messiah. The word denies just simply means no. Will not even mention the name of the Lord. Look how... Uh, how much is Jesus mentioned in our culture, in our world today? Not much, because the me most of the media is controlled by lost, and they are Christ deniers, and many of them are antichrists, little ones running around with their world philosophies. And he's, John's describing antichrist and what an, a little an antichrist is. Now he says this, Whosoever denies the Son, the same as not the Father. He that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. I think that's pretty cut and dry. Here's verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. All right? Let the truth of the Word of God abide, rest, resonate from us that we heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. And once again, this is continual action, that we are continuing. God's truth is, remain, is remaining right now in us. Abide, and we are abiding in Christ. But our, as we move on our daily walk with the Lord, that is continual action. It is, it is with us. Our command to abide with the Lord and stay on the straight and narrow is with us. Continue action. Here's John MacArthur. Those who continue in what they have heard show that what they have heard from the beginning abides in them. And they also will abide in the Son and in the Father. It's good encouragement. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. Literally, it says, even the life, the eternal. We, we have the life, and that life is eternal. And eternal life is fine. We've grown up with that. Just We have eternal life because we know Jesus. And then this wraps it all up, this section and these verses here. If you know these things I've written unto you concerning them that seduce you. All right, this is the... This is the ultimate spectrum of where all these antichrists are and these apostates. Their main goal is seduction, seduce, to pull away, to give a different philosophy, to apply pressure. If you're not part of my group, you're on the wrong side. There's a lot of that going on. And seduce means, from the Greek, to lead away, to deceive, to cause someone to wander. I have a question. Where are all the people from COVID-19 that were children of God that were in our churches? But you're not there now. Um, I, I frequent a certain business establishment and employs hundreds of people. And I do, I do walking there, fast walking, and I just walk to get steps in. I get to meet a lot of them. One, I, believe it or not, half of the Christians that I meet no longer go to church. They say they, they are Christians. I've heard their testimony. And they have all sorts of reasons to go. But guess what? They've been seduced. They've been led away. They're wandering. But the anointing, now this is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The, but the anointing, the Holy Spirit, which you've received of him, Jesus, abides in you. And received, uh, when it says, uh, but the anointing of the Holy Spirit, 
which you have laid of him, it has laid grasp on you. It's grabbed us. It's within us. And you need not that any man teach you. But at the same anointing teaches you of all things. And is truth and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. What he's saying is that strip everything away. If you've got the word of God, you're fine. You don't need to listen to anybody. However, if there are those that are brothers and sisters in Christ that are sharing Christ, you're sharing Christ, they're teachers of the word of God, pastor in the pulpit, we need to listen to them and to follow them. But however, the, the word of God is the benchmark of what they're saying. Listen carefully. And now, little children or born ones, in this sense, probably born again, abide in him, Jesus, that when he shall appear, and he's coming soon, we may have confidence or openness or freedom to speech. We should, as God's people, should not be closed mouth with the gospel in these last times. We need to open our mouth and share Jesus Christ and not be ashamed or disgraced before him at his coming. That's powerful, but that's a hard truth for me and for you. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. And the word if means since in this, in this verse. Since you know. It's not a question mark that do you know it or not. Since you know that Jesus is righteous and the righteous one, you know that everyone does righteousness is born of him. So in the Greek, it, born is teaching here is that, that the child is like the father. So the teaching of God's word teaches us to be and to, to be in the image of our father in righteousness and holiness and things of God. Well, here's a summary and we'll close with this. First of all, what we've covered today, just questions to ask. Is the gospel abiding in you? Do you, know, do you know for sure you have eternal life? Eternal life isn't church, isn't reading your Bible. Eternal life is knowing that you have sinned and acknowledge that sin and confess that sin before the Lord and receive his son, Jesus Christ, and acknowledge everything that has to do with his name, that he is God. And he is your and he can be your savior. He died on the cross to save you from your sins. Receive him and believe in him. And he will, he will come into your life. The spirit of God will dwell in you. Um, be on guard for those who try to pull you away for, for, from Christ. We must be on guard. Are you experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life? And so, I, the, the word like uh, just came to mind in these just little summary things. We need to be like Christ in his, and await his presence. We need to be like Christ because he teaches us truth. And uh, as far as our life is concerned... He seals and assures us, and the Word of God does, and the Spirit of God, that we are in Christ. Walk with the Lord. These are great, incredible truths that God has blessed us with. If I can help you in any way, this is my email. I encourage you to check uh, my playlist in the YouTube channel that you're watching. Uh, you'll find the earlier chapters and lessons on uh, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, but you'll find a lot of other book studies, topicals, Americana, Bible trivia quizzes, and uh, archaeological finds under Treasure Hunt and Solved and Unsolved Mysteries of the Bible. Those tend to be very popular. May God bless you, and uh, see you next time for Chapter 3.